Hello everybody, Nick here at Scog and Dickey. Now we have this fresh arrival of what has to be, I think, one of the best looking C8s I have seen yet. I've seen all the colors. A couple years ago we saw the convertible at SEMA. This has to be it. The black on black on black in the raciest combo ever. Now this is a customer's car. Not allowed to touch it. Definitely not allowed to drive it. But we do a lot of tech videos here at Scog and Nikki about engines and parts and features on a bunch of different stuff but we wanted to do a tech video about a car now if you're a c8 guy and you like to track your car i have two tips for you the first one's a big one the second one's a bit of a bonus but the first one talks about the tranny fluid <laughs> this stuff right here chevrolet has noticed that if you track your car really really hard you might end up with a situation where you get a low transmission fluid indicator and it puts the car in limp mode. We've only really experienced this with customers on real extreme circumstances, but we feel the need to tell you anyway. And we even got a couple pictures to show you if you're gonna do this yourself, where to put that fluid in. It's not that difficult, being that the transmission is kind of back here, right between the wheels. It's a matter of popping this up, removing a couple panels, and there's actually a fill hole right on top. It takes two quarts of the, of the special fluid that you can get from us, and of course, a funnel if you wanna do the job nice and clean, I hope you do. If you're asking, why do I need to add a couple quarts of fluid, and why didn't Chevrolet put it in the car from the factory, there's a couple actually understandable reasons for that. One, this car was very expensive to produce, and this fluid isn't cheap. So, it is at the normal fill level. It's not that they shorted you fluid, it's that when you go tracking, that fluid can slosh up on the sides of the case and just trip that sensor. GM themselves didn't even notice it until they really, really, really pushed their cars hard. And I'll be honest, we only have a couple customers that we have uh, talked to on the phone that have experienced it. And they actually only did it when they were doing donuts and burnouts in a parking lot. So maybe it's not something you'll experience until you push your car very, very hard, but it's something that you need to know. And GM actually does approve of this, of adding the two quarts of fluid. You can leave it in there for daily, normal use, and it does not hurt anything. It does increase a little bit of drag, and that's a big reason why they didn't do it. It's a little bit extra weight. This isn't exactly lightweight in my hand. It does increase, you know, drag with all that extra fluid in there, and that affects gas mileage and emissions, stuff like that. They're trying to get this car to, you know, meet certain performance figures like all manufacturers are, so that's kind of some of the reasons too. And like I said, GM themselves did not exactly experience this problem until their cars were pushed to abuse. So this is something you probably won't even really experience, but it's something you really need to know. And if you ever experience that, maybe you'll know that you didn't exactly hurt your car, it was doing it to protect itself. The little bonus tip I have for you is actually the alignment specs on this car. Now, we wanted to at least let some of you guys know if you're really looking at tracking one of these, and believe me, you really should. <laughs> they are a wonderful performance car. It is not just a gimmick that they put the engine in the back. This is a huge leap forward in performance and engineering for Corvette. But the engineers knew that. They knew that some of their more diehard customers that had gotten used to a front engine Corvette going to a rear engine was going to change the handling characteristics of the car. It is for sure a better handling car, but it still changes the characteristics. And one of those is a little extra weight over the rear can kind of cause a bit of oversteer, especially with that much power. So they actually set up the suspension and the alignment specs from the factory to understeer just a, just a hair. And that's good, that's safe. You know, when you're pushing it to the limit and it starts to push the front tires, it's a nice safe reminder that you've pushed it a little too far. But for the guys that are really gonna track these cars, especially if you add two quarts of fluid and maybe some stickier tires, you really wanna adjust some of those settings to really be able to get the full potential of this car. I really appreciate you guys stopping by for another one of our weekly tech videos. This one was pretty special. This is a, a good customer that has decided to uh, buy it from us and fly in and snag it. And like I said, I, man, I wish we could drive it. It is the coolest car that we've had on the showroom in a long, long time, even with the Copos here. But we're gonna save it for him. And we really hope you appreciate this video. Give us a like, subscribe, and a share on both Facebook and YouTube so we can spread this information. And we'll see you guys next week.